Do I still get nervous? 100%. Oh, I'm way more nervous refereeing than I ever was playing. Uh, and I, I guess I, I just know the responsibility on our shoulders to, to perform. Nothing worse than going home and on Monday you go to the groceries and your old grandma's giving you a serve about some decision, which happens, you know. Never happened as a play, but a referee, you're just a, a chap in the middle that people want to say, mate, what the hell was that decision? You've got to understand what the game means. Last game for the Crusaders, second last for the Rebels, so you know there's plenty on. Straight away there'll be a little more tension than some other games, so it's to expect that, so you've got to turn up with a professional attitude. This is the ref's change shed. Well, this is our team. And this is Lyndon, so she's the boss of uh, Christchurch Refereeing, or Canterbury Refereeing, one of the best in the business, in terms of match day manager as well. And she knows that I love pineapple lumps, so always a few more pineapple lumps than the rest in there. The real work starts about quarter to seven. We run through both teams, talk to their front rows around what we're expecting at scrum time. Referees, guys. Front row, half back, fresh their boots, please. Sometimes it can be a little bit weird doing that, but it's part of law through safety, so it doesn't matter if you're doing under fives or the All Blacks. Every referee has to talk to the front row around what they expect. People will be interested to know that we still check boots and mouth guards at this level. And players expect it because I think they've grown up since five up to, you know, 30. They, that's just what happens. And the change shed for us and for the players is very important that we come with a positive and, and uh, strong mindset around um, what we're after. I think if a referee walked into that change shed showing some vulnerability or, you know, maybe some nervousness, then players pick up on that pretty, pretty clearly. Uh, boys, not really a lot for me, just obviously around the bind process, just making sure you're in a good, strong position. Especially around the bind and your feet position, I don't want to rush that. So if it's going through, who mostly? OK, so if, it, if you feel like it's too rushed, just give us a heads up. And then uh, the captains are probably our most important people we deal with in terms of uh, 80 minutes. Sam Whitelock's a fantastic captain, good guy to deal with, but also asks you some tough questions, you know, so you've got to understand that good hard questions are going to come your way and, and you just got to have a good answer around it. It's good to touch base with them because then we go and toss the coin. And then that's pretty much it for us and players. Uh, it's a tail. Uh, can we play away from the sheet? Um, it's a very important part of professional rugby is our communication vest and gear. Just so our communication through ARs and the TMOs there's no issues around that. We've got some really, really good stuff in New Zealand, so that helps. Um, and then it's just our own warm-up. So probably start about 10 past seven, uh, out in the field, check our communication gear there, and we'll come back in probably about 7, 26, 27. And then it's sort of game time, you know, the last sort of five, eight minutes is your own time, just preparing, making sure our boys are all ready, and, and then just run out with the guys and hope for the best. <laughs>